Welcome to worship at Our Redeemer Lutheran Church in McMurray, Pennsylvania. As a congregation, we are worshiping in person now, each Saturday at 5.30 and each Sunday at 9 and 11. When the weather permits, we will be having our 11 o'clock service outside. So those weeks, please bring a chair with you if you're planning to do the outside service. Our preacher today is our new intern, Vicar Katie McNeil. So we're glad to have her bring us God's word. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the Father who gives us life, the Son who teaches us to live, the Spirit who gathers us into life together. Amen. We begin our worship confessing our sin and trusting in the forgiveness that God alone can offer. I invite you to join me in your hearts. You know us, Lord, better than we know ourselves. You perceive what in us needs to be loved, what in us needs to be forgiven, what in us needs to be changed. And so we pray, come to us with your forgiving love. Come to us with your transforming love. Come to us with your renewing love. These are the words of Jesus. They are strong and true, so believe them. I have come that you may have life in all its fullness. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Come and follow me. Now, God, help us to live as forgiven people, loving and serving you and our neighbor this day and every day. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is from Genesis, the 50th chapter. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do me harm, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is from Psalm 103. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You will not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far you have removed our transgressions from us. As the Father has compassion for his children, so you have compassion for those who fear you, O Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle all accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And, as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and his payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. 
Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused, and he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Your sins are forgiven. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Forgiveness. It's no small concept. There's no doubt, though, that forgiveness is a rich and necessary part of our Christian identity. Confession and forgiveness is a regular part of our worship. We pray that we forgive others in our everyday lives through the Lord's Prayer. Several dozen times throughout Scripture, we hear about the importance and necessity of forgiveness. In today's Gospel, we hear about the reaches of forgiveness and its reoccurring presence in our relationships. And as Christians, we strive to live into that part of our identity, showing forgiveness to others in our everyday lives, both in extraordinary and in mundane ways. We might forgive someone when they accidentally call us by the wrong name. We might forgive someone when they eat our lunch out of the break room fridge. We might forgive a person who shows up a little late for a coffee date. But what about when someone really hurts us? bullies us, abuses us, spreads rumors about us, hurts someone we love. How do we forgive someone when what they said or what they did is just not okay in any sense of the word? But in today's first reading, we hear just that level of forgiveness. When Joseph was a boy, his brothers were jealous of him and sold him into slavery to get rid of him. And then they told their father that his beloved son had been killed. And so Joseph grew up in Egypt, facing his own trials and imprisonment before being invited to a place in the court. So for 13 chapters in Genesis, we hear this story of Joseph's struggles and successes. We hear about Joseph putting his trust not in the brothers who sold him who broke that trust the minute they conspired to get rid of him, but in God, who was with him throughout the entire story. And then in today's reading, at the very end of Genesis, we hear the story of Joseph forgiving his brothers for all of that. He had reached out a hand of forgiveness a few chapters before, and today he does it again showing that forgiveness offered to his brothers was not contingent on their father's presence or on anything for that matter. Now, he doesn't explicitly say, I forgive you. But in his actions and what he promises to do, Joseph is forgiving his brothers. He acknowledges what has been done to him. He acknowledges that he has lost the ability to trust that his brothers will not hurt him. And all the same, He invites them into a new relationship with him, a new relationship where he will provide for his brothers and their families. And now, as the brothers are entering into a world without their father living with them, Joseph once again forgives his brothers, ending the old relationship and beginning a new one, one where the forgiveness is clearly, freely given, with or without the mediating presence of their father. And isn't that what it is to forgive? To end what was and to begin a new thing without strings? Now, to be clear, the moment when Joseph forgives his brothers, the moment the relationship between Joseph and his brothers becomes a new thing, 
And that moment does not make what was done magically okay. It does not condone what the brothers did. It does not erase the history. Forgiveness does not do that. But forgiveness does release one from the strings of what has been. When you forgive someone, you are freed from being trapped as a hurt, angry, revenge-seeking victim. And you instead can choose to let love and grace be the guiding forces in your life, as Joseph did in today's first reading. When you forgive someone, you are allowing yourself to walk into a new beginning, one where the strings of what has been no longer hold you back. And that's why it's so important for us to forgive. When someone calls us by the wrong name, eats our lunch, is late for a meeting, and when someone hurts us, bullies us, abuses us, slanders our name, hurts someone we love, we can choose to let that hurt and anger consume us and rule our lives and the way we live. Or we can put to death what was, and we can open the path to forgiveness. We can open our hearts to the love we hear from God each week and let that love lead our path forward instead. It doesn't condone the actions. It doesn't erase the natural consequences. But it does lead us into a path forward. Our relationship with the person who hurt us will never be the same. The trust that once was there is broken. The trust that they wouldn't or couldn't hurt us, the trust that they would hold our confidences, and the trust that they will love and support us as we do what we feel we are called to do and be. And there is pain and there is grief in that loss and broken trust. The relationship will not be what it was. So we let go of the idea that things will go back to the way things were. We grieve the loss of what was. We cut the strings to the pain and the hurt and the need to get even. And we open a door to a new beginning, a rebirth of what was into what could be. Maybe that new beginning does not include the person who hurt you. But maybe it could lead into a new beginning of a new relationship with that person, one that is deeper and richer for having gone through the hurt and the pain. The forgiveness is not about condoning what was done. It's about acknowledging what was and saying that you are ready to move beyond what was, to release any thoughts of revenge or payback and open a new beginning guided by love in our lives, free of strings. It's not easy. It's not easy because it can be hard to let go and to grieve the way things were. To accept the way things were is over and done. It's not easy to move into a new beginning, leaving behind what was. It's not easy to let love lead the way when hurt and anger are fighting for that position. It's not easy to let go of any notion of getting even or payback. It's not easy to move into a new beginning of a new relationship with people who have hurt you. And it's not easy because people are human and we will be hurt again, maybe even by the same person. It gets exhausting. Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Forgiveness is hard. But Jesus answers, not seven times, but 77 times, as many times as it takes. And when it gets hard, when it gets exhausting, and when it seems like forgiveness just isn't possible this time, that's when we lean on God's love for us and trust that God will be with us through the struggles and successes of this world as God was with Joseph walking us through the difficulties of forgiveness into the beautiful freedom of a new beginning of forgiveness. Not just seven times, but as many times as it takes. Forgiveness is a deep-seated and necessary part of our Christian identity. There's no doubt. As children of God, we are called and commanded to lead a life guided and shaped by love not hurt or anger or vengeance. We are not called to seek payback for what has been. We are called to love. 
We are called to live into the difficulty of the death of endings and the life of new beginnings of forgiveness, free of strings, not just seven times, but as many times as it takes. When someone calls us by the wrong name, eats our lunch, is late for a meeting, and when someone hurts us, bullies us, abuses us, slanders our name, and hurts someone we love, we forgive. And we just keep forgiving, just as Joseph did, just as Jesus tells us to, free of strings, trusting in God's presence and strength in all our lives, through it all. Because that's what we do as children of God. Lord, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. Together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayer response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You welcome us back when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be present with those in California, Oregon, and Washington states. We pray for those who have lost homes and family members to the raging wildfires. Watch over the firefighters who put their lives at risk for others. Send rain upon the parched land and give hope to those who are now homeless and discouraged. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with all teachers and students and parents during this school year. Give patience and encouragement and creativity to all who must find new ways of teaching and learning. We pray for wisdom and restraint for college students that the health and safety of all will guide them in the choices they make. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your healing. Guide healthcare workers and researchers in their work to control the novel coronavirus and bring healing to those afflicted by it. Shelter all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We especially pray for Amy, Ruth Ann, Dorothy, Judy, Janet, Tom, Chris, Larry, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in, our, in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.